A reading from the Gospel of Mark. One of the scribes came to Jesus and asked him, Which is the first of all the commandments? Jesus replied, The first is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is Lord alone. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. The scribe said to him, Well said, teacher. You are right in saying, He is one, and there is no other than he. And to love him with all your heart, with all all your understanding, with all your strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself is worth more than all burnt offerings and sacrifices. And when Jesus saw that he answered with understanding, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. And no one dared to ask him any more questions. In today's gospel, we see Jesus summarizing the entire Jewish law, i.e. the 613 commandments, into two. Although we often assume that there were only 10 commandments, that number was off by a good 603, which Paul would eventually be credited as eliminating in order to accommodate Gentile Christian converts. As a result, the fact that Jesus is able to summarize 613 commandments into two makes it much more impressive than if he were summarizing 10 to two. Yet what really struck me when reading this passage is who Jesus is conversing with in this gospel, namely a Jewish scribe who he says is not far from the kingdom of God. Moreover, whenever we hear about the scribes, we hear them looped in with the temple priest and the elders. In other words, according to Mark's gospel, the scribes were part of the problem because they worked with the Sadducees, a.k.a. the temple priests who worked in cooperation with the Roman Empire, to the point that they were de facto employees of Rome. Yet in this case, we find that this particular scribe is an exception to the rule. He isn't part of the problem, and Jesus notices that right away. This, of course, isn't the only instance where we find an exception to a group that was at odds with Jesus. The most noteworthy example is Joseph of Arimathea, a member of the Sanhedrin, or Jewish council which was run by the Sadducees, or temple priests, as we said earlier. Although the Sanhedrin, as a subset of the Sadducees, would also have worked with the Roman Empire, Joseph was also an exception to them, since he uses his influence to convince Pontius Pilate to take Jesus down from the cross before the Sabbath. So what is it that we can infer from today's gospel? It's important to note that we can't just haphazardly blame every single group of people for any bad thing that occurs in history. In the case of the life of Jesus, not every one of the Sadducees should be blamed for killing him. There were, as Joseph of Arimathea indicates, higher-ups in Judaism who weren't corrupt and therefore shouldn't be blamed for killing Jesus. Furthermore, you can't blame the entire Roman Empire for killing Jesus either. There were plenty of Roman citizens who were very good people and therefore shouldn't be blamed. And worst of all, since they are most often the scapegoats for killing Jesus, blaming every single Jew to have ever existed is not accurate at all and untrue. Furthermore, it's not even historically accurate. For instance, when we hear John's Gospel referring to the Jews 
the term is most likely referring to the Pharisees, who kicked the Jewish Christians out of the synagogues, not to mention the mainstream Jews who took their side, therefore excommunicating them from all of Judaism. In our own lives, it's never right to blame an entire group for anything. Racism and cultural bigotry are a great modern-day example of how people do this. So the lesson here is that it's never right to generalize entire groups of people, whether in Jesus' time or in the present day.